Well, hello there, everyone. How you doing today? It's Sunday, September 15th, year 2024. First of all, my apologies to you. I just realized last night I was looking at my YouTube app, and it's like, my goodness, it's been a while since I made a video. My apologies. I've been extra busy here. Anyway, hopefully you're doing outstanding. And it's, if it's your first time to the channel, I am Masky Finance. And as always, I'm not a CPA, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not even a doctor or nutritionist. I'm just a guy who's financially independent. And I'm the guy who's a blue collar worker all his life, never made a lot of money in my life. But, as you heard me say, I've gone from zero to 25 rentals in four years. I started back in 2017, I think it was, January 2017. So anyway, I was 49 years old when I first bought my first rental house. So if you're watching this and you think, oh, I'm too old to get started. No, you're not. Or you're thinking, I don't have enough money. That's okay. That's okay. It does not matter who you are. Okay. I mean, yes, to some extent, maybe it does, but it's what's up here. Do you want to become financially independent? Do you want to? Majority of people do. Not everyone does, but the majority do. Most people will, if they work a job, work 40 years roughly, and retire and get maybe 40% of their income to live on in their senior years. That's probably not what you think you want when you're young in your 20s or 30s or something. You want to be wealthy when you get older, don't you? Okay, so how do you get started? How do you get started? There's a variety of ways. I've talked recently with two different people, both younger than me by quite a bit. Uh, neither have investments per se. I don't know the actual income of either person. I know both have had debt. I know I think one's paid debt off and the other one is, I believe, getting closer to paying the debt off. Okay, so that's great. That's great because debt, for a lot of people, debt is what causes that spiral down. They get in that hole. They owe money to the credit card company or whatever and they just can't dig themselves out. No matter what struggles I may have ever, I've always, always, always have strived to pay my credit card off in full every month so I do not pay interest on my credit card debt. Sure, there's been times where I may look at my credit cards and say, okay, I got 10 grand and a rehab to put on a credit card. Which one will postpone the, the payment the longest and give me, give me 45 days or so? And I've done that because then I get like a free loan for 45 days, okay? So anyway, if you're one of those folks and you're thinking, how... Masky, how are you saying I can buy a rental property? I live in the high state, high cost of living state, California, or Washington, Seattle, Washington, or New York City, or Boston, or anywhere on the East Coast or West Coast, almost, where it's so expensive. Here's how you can do it. There's different ways you can do it, okay? Uh, i give you two examples up in the Northwest, the Pacific Northwest, where near Seattle, there's two gentlemen I know. Uh, one's um, Dion and the other one's Millennial Mike. They both have done something similar. It's a high cost of living area. Um, what they both do is what's called house hacking. And the way you can house hack is you can buy a duplex, a triplex, or a quadplex to live in. Yes, I know it's expensive. But if you're going to live in it, you can get some sort of mortgage, like a first time home buyer's mortgage or something to that effect. Okay? And maybe you get to put 5% down or 3.5% down, okay? So you still got to have a down payment, which means you got to be working a job and you got to save money. You have to figure out how you can live. You're making money up here. You got to live down here. And you save what's in the middle there, okay? What the difference there, you got to save that. Because you got to have that down payment. Yes, there's ways you can get a down payment perhaps. Perhaps the way I did it at age 49-ish. I had a paid off primary residence I lived in in Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley, and I went and got a HELOC for $30,000. And that HELOC for 30 grand I used to help strongly supplement my down payment on a single family home. Knowing what I know now, if I could turn back the hands of time to when I was in my late 20s, 30 ish, I would have bought a duplex, triplex, or quadplex. Why? Because I get a residential mortgage, just like a normal mortgage, like on a single family home. And yet, by living there, I have my tenants pay some, all, or even give me a surplus on paying my mortgage, my taxes, my insurance. And if it depends on the rent, where you're buying at, and all that kind of stuff, maybe they're giving you enough extra where now, if you have a repair, you have a roof to put on, you have a hot water heater, maybe they're giving you enough that you can 
have that money saved up because of what the rent the tenants pay you. Or even if not, if your mortgage is being paid, well, by golly, everyone else who's buying their first house, they're paying their mortgage out of their pocket from their paycheck. You're having tenants pay you. See the beauty in that? See the beauty in that, all right? So let's say you don't want to do that though for whatever reason. Say, even say in your area, maybe a duplex is $1.5 million and it's just too much money. I understand, I understand. Second step would be then, especially if you're in a high cost living area, look elsewhere, all right? This is scarier perhaps. It's more intimidating perhaps. I first bought local to me in Virginia when I lived there in Shenandoah Valley. It wasn't the cheapest place, but it wasn't the most expensive place, but that's where I bought my first five rental units was there, okay? Then I decided to venture out of state. I bought in Birmingham, Alabama, and I bought up in Gary, Indiana, okay? I found out as time went on, I'm not gonna summarize my entire story, it's in other videos. I, for whatever reason, I had trouble in Birmingham, Alabama. I went through three property managers, couldn't find the right management team, and if you don't have the right boots on the ground, it's not going to work. you got to have the right people on the ground. Up in Gary, Indiana, I found good people. That's my boots on the ground, okay? And that helped me get going. And that's what spiraled me up to that zero to 25 in four years, okay? Houses are cheaper in the Midwest. Houses are cheaper in Birmingham in the South. They're cheaper up in Indiana. People invest in Kentucky. They invest in Pennsylvania. They invest in Ohio. They invest in Missouri, Kansas, all throughout the Midwest. You have to find your area to invest in and find your boots on the ground, the people that will help you. Maybe it's a real estate agent who works with investors and they can recommend a property manager to you. But if you can buy a house cheaper, and I'll give you some examples. I, my first house I bought in Birmingham, Alabama was uh, $35,000, 35,000, okay? Um, in Gary, when I bought houses, I bought them for, I think the most I've ever paid is like $69,000, I believe. The cheapest I have bought a house for up in Gary was $18,000. Yes, you heard that right. I bought a house for $18,000 in Gary, Indiana. I had to pay cash for it because you can't get a mortgage that cheap. I had to pay cash for it. Okay, and this was along my, after I had bought a bunch of rental properties where I had some more cash, cash saved up. All right. It needed about five thousand dollars worth of rehab work. It because it was a the guy, whoever the guy, gal, whoever had, had it before me, they were trying to rehab it and they fell in hard times, I guess. So a lot of the rehab work had been done. I put about five thousand dollars into it, got it re ready, um, and then so I with closing costs because when you even pay cash, you got to pay closing costs with a title company about uh, fifteen hundred dollars, let's say. I think I was like twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars all in rent ready house okay i still own the house i've done minimal repair work to it and i probably had it four years maybe I, I think i got the same tenant in there from day one okay rent's gone up but it's the same tenant they like the house they wanted to buy it from me but i'm not selling it okay so just put it in your mind where there's a will there's a way put it in your mind if you've never thought about doing this if you've never thought that you could own a rental house. If you are renting your apartment, if you're renting your condo, you're renting your single family home, and you just think you cannot afford to buy a house, well, maybe you can't afford to buy a house in your area. Maybe you can't even buy that duplex, triplex, or quadplex, because maybe the cost is just too astronomical. You know, I know parts of California, for example, I think uh, lo cheapest shack you can buy is about a million dollars, okay? If you have to live in that area, Bay Bay Area, California or someplace, um, you're, you may not be able to afford a nice duplex to buy. I don't know what it costs up there. I haven't checked, okay? In the Shenandoah Valley, if I had known this way back when, I could have done it. They weren't, duplexes weren't that common around there. It's a small area, but I could have done it. I should have done it. My boys were little at the time. They wouldn't have cared and my paycheck would have gone so much further. God, I struggled to pay my mortgage payment in my early 30s with two kids, a 105 pound German Shepherd, a cat, two parakeets. Um, one of my kids was a baby and I, I struggled. My, pay, my mortgage was one paycheck out of two and I worked a ton of overtime 
And you think I shortened my life while every time I work just to be able to afford not just pay the mortgage, but to pay the gas bill and the electric bill and the water bill and to buy the food for the family and to buy diapers and to feed the pets and so on and so on and so on. But put it in your mind where there's a will, there's a way. Because I'll tell you this, I haven't been the most successful investor. I'm not the worst investor. I've made mistakes with investing. I've been scammed up in Virginia. I was scammed by a contractor one time. I've been scammed other times. I've had tenants treat me bad. I've had tenants mess up houses. But guess what? I was able to buy this house I'm in right now in Southwest Florida. And I got a mortgage on it for my investments. That's the Orioles game on the TV up there. I got the volume turned down. My investments qualified me to get this mortgage. This house, when I bought it, cost half a million dollars, roughly. All right, $555,000, I think it was. But then I got a swimming pool out there. See that swimming pool? You've seen it four in different videos. Uh, where is it? That's my boat lift down there. And I can't, oh, there it is. Right up in there. It's hard to see with the glare, at least hard for me to see. That's my tiki hut down there, my dock. I got a 12 by 12 four pole dock, uh, dock with a, uh, four poles in it with a tiki hut, and I got a smaller lower level dock. If you have a kayak, you can launch it from that lower dock much easier into that golf access canal. That boat lift down there, if you got the money and you wanna buy this house, I am putting it on the market. If you wanna buy this house and buy yourself a boat, well, by golly, you can sail from that boat lift down to the river, down to the Gulf of Mexico, out into the Atlantic Ocean, and Depends on the boat you get. You can go almost anywhere in the world once you get to the Atlantic Ocean, I think. And he stole second base. <laughs> cool deal. I got the volume turned down. I can't tell. So anyway, when I'm saying this, I did a video the other day, walked to his house a little bit. The point I'm trying to make with all my videos, I like that fan up there. The point I'm trying to make with all my videos, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much money you make. 1998. I know that was a long time ago for some of you. I took a job as a police officer. My starting pay was $23,000 a year. When I retired from my job in 2018, same police department, I was making $52,000 a year. And yet, I still was investing from the time I bought my first house. I started investing as a 22 year old, buying mutual funds. I've told this story before. I didn't have a lot of money. I put $50 a month into a mutual fund. That's how I got started. I got a lot of videos on my channel. I've, and my apologies again for not uh, making one in the past couple weeks. But I got a lot of videos. I know you can't sit there and watch them all. It would take you months probably to watch all those videos. But look at my playlist. I have interviews with others. I've had Michael Zuber on my channel, Millennial Mike, Dion. Uh, lots of people. I've had Cowboy up in New York City. He buys rental property up in New York City. He's in Brooklyn, I think. Where he, he's a police officer up in New York. He's bought rental properties up there. I've had Justin in Kentucky. He's like, that young man's like 29 years old and he's up there. He's pushing like 30 rental units now, I think, or 30 something, 29 years old. I've had Helicopter Pilot Caleb on my channel and so on and so on and so on. And look at the playlist, just my playlist of how I went from zero to 25 rentals in four years. I use a variety of tricks and techniques from that HELOC to cashback refinances to selling one to buy four, so on and so on and so on. So how do you like these tall ceilings? <laughs> I'm telling you, if you want this, if you got the resources to get this house, it is going to go in the market. Uh, my agent's telling me he's going to list it at about $900,000. So if you got the money, and you want to buy this for $900,000, shoot me an email. <laughs> you know, uh, we'll see what we can do. We can work something out. All right, Orioles got second and third base right now with one out. All right, so with that being said, I am going to wrap this up so I can turn that volume up and listen to the game a little better. I got laundry in there. I got one load in the dryer, one load in the washing machine. So I got to take care of that. That being said, I will probably go for a swim later today. And if it doesn't rain this evening, I'll probably go for a walk, and I definitely got to walk to the grocery store because I don't have a vehicle here. I got to get some stuff. I'm out of garlic. I need my garlic. All right, so y'all have a great day. Take care of yourself. I'll hopefully talk to you again soon. And with that being said, Maskies signing out.